Only about a tenth of the world's surface has yet been adequately mapped. So New Zealand, about two-thirds done, can be accounted well covered. The man with the theodolite is still in the field. But today, all he has to do is fix control points for air photographs. Where he works, the aerial mapping company works also. Most mapping runs are done east to west or west to east. Pete Van Ash, founder of the firm, averages 300 flying hours a year. The course has to be set to compensate for wind. In the nose, the automatic camera is mounted and lined up. For a ground surveyor, the country below would be no walkover. Cloudless conditions are necessary, and when these occur, good visibility can be counted on. The exposures have a 60% overlap. After each shot, the film rolls on. Air photographs can simplify many studies. Town planning, for example. When the long rolls of film have been developed, one set of adjusted prints is pasted up with overlapping edges torn irregularly to conceal joins. The whole of a district can now be rephotographed on one negative. Besides forming a basis for maps, air photographs have many direct uses the study of rivers and access to forests, to show the layout of irrigation projects. They give more detail than any map can do of railway routes. This is the famous Raurimu spiral. Paired on a stereoscope, successive pictures from the automatic camera can be seen in depth and used to make maps complete by filling in contours between ground surveyors' control points. At Tauranga, children ride from the Mission House, one of the oldest dwellings of the Pākehā, past the wellhead that gave pure water to the earliest gospel bringer. Children say farewell at Māori Maketu, descendants of the Danish trader Tapsel. This family's founder fought the blind-eyed Nelson on Napoleon's side at the Battle of Copenhagen. On their way, the children of Tapihana pass steel-cut stones that say, here on this shore, the great canoe Te Arawa landed from islands east their Maori ancestor. With clattering hoof and jingling bridle, the tricks begun from many a country roof, heading to Rotorua from points all round to meet new friends on riding's common ground. Leave young sister at home to wave goodbye and the whole wide world is neath the open sky. All the world, and at each crossroad, three broad choices of ways ahead. Best narrow the choice to the road agreed. Narrow the path to the time and plan. Meet all the others as soon as you can. Through the township along the road, in shade of the avenue over the hill, and those that saw them are wondering still whence and whither that cavalcade. Where are they going, Mum? I don't know. Come like summer and gone like snow. Come unheralded, gone unknown. Like a thing imagined, a crop unsown. Or brief apple blossom that wind has blown. Sleep through the night and when darkness is gone, there is dew underfoot and the bits cold as stone to the mouth of the piebald, the grey and the roan. There is dew underfoot and the bits cold as stone. There are clouds on the hill saying day is still young. So tighten the girth soon a saddle is slung. There are clouds on the hill for the day is still young. The road lies ahead between sheltering thorn. New sights and new places inviting them on. The road lies ahead between sheltering thorn. Each at one with his mount then they joggle along towards Rotorua Lake, unless signposts are wrong. Each at one with his mount, be he pony or horse, finds the highway is hard, but the roadside is grass, with the cock's foot grown tall as their knees as they pass. The highway is hard, and from Long Acre's grass, the wandering cows move aside till they're past. A rest is in order. This halt is the last.
Pony Club is the name, but name only, of course, as most members favour a real man-sized horse. To the Rotorua camp, the trek's on its last day. Down Hongi's old warpath, the club's on its way. Armoured Hongi the brave, armoured Hongi the cruel, fought this way to the lake with the fell musket ball. Napoleon of New Zealand was boast of his pride, but when fate stole his armour, the bear Hongi died. Today down his track rides a well-horsed young band, thrusting straight for the heart of the Arawa land. Thrusting straight for the lake, but each comes as a friend to the Rotorua people just round the next bend. Now the lake is in sight. Hope and I and hooray! The water will settle the dust of the day. Young Arawa horsemen are here to give welcome. A week's camp ahead and the long trek is done. Pony Club membership is open to all children. This rally of the Rotorua, Waikato and Bay of Plenty Clubs is just one of the many summer activities of clubs all over the country. <laughs> Parents have made preparations ahead of the parties of young riders all along the several routes taken to Rotorua. Everything is ready for courses of instruction in horsemanship for the routine of life in camp, and for equestrian sports of every kind. Anyone do I understand? Any more rock riders? Force the pace in the bending race, clatter no bars in the steeplechase jump. Ginger the mount with a pat on the rump that he's slow off the mark in the polo event. Tent peg and stirrup, lacrosse stick and ball, fill up day's saddlebag, kit bag and all. Canvas and saddlery, days in the sun, a riding, a riding, till pony camp's done. Mr. F. W. Reed, a retired pharmacist, lived at Huangarei, North Auckland. He was recognized as the world authority on the French writer Alexander Dumas. He read his first Dumas story when he was 12 and became so interested that he made a lifetime study of the life and works of the author. At the age of 45, he learnt French to assist him in his work, which included translating and typing 72 plays and publishing a bibliography of Dumas which was gladly accepted by the British Museum. In the collection of over 3,000 volumes are many rare first editions. Here's one of the first illustrated editions of the Count of Monte Cristo. Strange that the world authority on Dumas should have lived so far from France. Through Mr. Reed's benevolence, the Auckland Public Library now owns the Reed Dumas collection. In what is the most comprehensive collection of Dumas literature to be found anywhere, are over a thousand sheets of manuscript of plays, poems and articles in the French author's handwriting. For his services to literature, the French government conferred honours upon Mr. Reed, including the Legion of Honour. The well-known sculptor Alexander Fraser taught carving and modelling at Wellington Technical College at the beginning of the century. The sculptural designs in the New Zealand Pavilion at Wembley Exhibition were his. Amongst his works exhibited at the Royal Academy in London is the bronze of this bust of the Maori chief Horonuku Te Huhu, who gave Tongariro National Park to the nation. As his deft fingers add the finishing touches to the portrait, his last work, Alexander Fraser leaves his mark on New Zealand's artistic history. <laughs> 